Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 is the most popular game in the series, with a thriving community of players and content creators. I've never played 2, I only played number 3. This is part 2 of the 3 part series, where we play all 3 of the Roller Coaster Tycoon games going backwards. So apparently the depth of this game goes way deeper than I could even imagine. In fact, a popular creator in the space managed to make a functioning calculator using rides in the game. This video will be a quick revisit of an old classic. Our goal during this exploration will be to play for six or more months and be profitable. And so now this begs the question, how will I feel revisiting Roller Coaster Tycoon 2? Let's go! So we have tutorials, which we're not going to do at all because we never do. And we're going to click on start a new game. I was looking for a sandbox mode and it simply doesn't have one. But what is nice is if you click on game tools, this game does feature a scenario editor, which allowed me to basically make a sandbox mode that I feel like this game really needs. In the scenario editor, we have all of these different rides as options that you can feature in your playthrough, I suppose. And I bet you anything, the reason why they limit how many you can have, it was probably hardware limitations of the time, which is unfortunate because I don't understand why I can't have just all of them. And then you have a landscape editor and I do appreciate how big the maps are. So you can even up the map size by holding this down, which makes it even bigger, like you even need that right now. You can set the starting positions for people and the park entrance path as well. So under other parks, I built a scenario called actual fun, the way it should be played. How pompous of me, the way it should be played. So our park is closed as you can see here. And if we zoom out with using the mouse wheel, we can see we've got a massive park, which is the way it should be played. Holding down the right mouse button allows me to drag the screen around. I don't know if there's hotkeys for this, but if I hit this button, I'm assuming this rotates my screen. Yes, it does. So the first thing I'm noticing is the UI. I actually do like the UI user interface, by the way. Sorry for the technical jargon. The user interface, which is the stuff that we're seeing up here, I feel is better than Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 already. Looks like we can modify the land by increasing the size or decreasing the size of our pran marker. What do you call it? And uh, some different stuff here. I'm not sure what that pattern is, but hey, it's the theme park. And we have water. If I go down, it's not creating a lake. I guess we can put bodies of water above the ground. Oh my gosh, I've already spent nearly $4,000 of my money. But we have all these awesome sprites of different plants that we can add trees and stuff like that. Walls, gate types. So we have different path types and queue lines. And we have our rides. We got our transport rides, gentle rides, roller coasters, which we have plenty of options and thrill rides. I know these graphics are old, but I'm actually really loving the weather effects. I know it looks old. Something about that graphic looks really nice. So I'm gonna start by building a path here. And again, I have to, I just have to say this. I don't like drawing my path like this. I just don't like it. I like a straight line system. Games where if I go like this and then take a sharp left, it creates an L path because I'm a very boxy kind of guy and it bugs the ever living heck out of me if I'm doing a straight line and then oops. And another thing I'm not liking is I have to individually right click each thing that I'm selling. I can't like drag click because that moves the screen. Okay, we're gonna start generating some income here. So I'm gonna start with just getting a thrill ride in here first. Well, that's kind of cool. You could put stuff on your roads and then it like lifts your ride. And we need our entrance, we need our exit. And then we're going to add our queue lines here. Oh geez, I have a problem here. How do I lift my road? I'm messing things up here. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that stuff and start over. I'm gonna give myself space for some queue lines here. And I realize I'm not playing optimally at all. And how does that work? I'm trying to get my entrance to go all the way over there, but instead it connected right here. So do I right click? Maybe it'll, oh my gosh. The game's old, what do I expect? So let's see what options we have with the ride. Number of rotations. So we're seeing some similar options that we saw in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. We can wait for a full load, half load, quarter load, three quarters load, or any load. load. And minimum and maximum waiting times, which for people that are trying to like make an optimal park, these features are very, very necessary. Okay, and we get our color types and we have the same problem yet again. These tycoon games just hate colorblind people. They really do. Look, I'm not gonna lie. These colors pop 
in my opinion, way more than they did in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. They're just much more vibrant and they pop out from the ground so much more. But I don't know what the heck I'm choosing. I wish there was just a little tooltip where you just mouse over and eventually it just said white. Fun fact, 5% of the population is colorblind. Ooh, that's kind of nice, I think. You can choose different music types and admission price. Why can't I click on that? I mean, that's how I prefer it to be, but why can't I click on that? You would think I'd be able to set the price. Can I not set the price for the park? I can. I wonder if that's a setting somewhere or something. And we can open up our ride and open our park. We are open for business. Our first guest. Let's get some staff. We're gonna hire a handyman with more uniform colors, a mechanic. I guess that's different than a handyman and an entertainer. Oh, and you can pick people up just like in the newer game too. They honestly did a really great job with the sprite work in this game. I'd argue even better than Zoo Tycoon 1. Okay, is there like guest amenities? So we have rides. Where do I find guest amenities? This window system is really nice. Oh, shops installed is under the ride section. Silly me. When you have these clicked, you do have these nice little animations, but this one right here, unless you already knew that this was gonna be shops and stalls, it'd be nice if this was kind of like this flask here was like a drink cup or something like that. Just a little bit easier to distinguish, but I'm nitpicking, okay? I'm nitpicking because I like this game so far. And we've got a burger bar. Z rotates in this game as well. So you can't get as crazy with like removing pickles and adding double the cheese and all that stuff, but you don't really need that. It just added that realism to the tycoon aspect. We got so many different stall types. Like I don't even know what I'm looking at half these things are. And we will add a, oh geez. I wish there was an undo button, control Z. They really make you own your mistakes. <laughs> We're sinking fast, but if I click on this, I think I can take out more of a loan. Yes, I can but there is interest on the loan. Weekly profit, we're still in the negative it looks like. Oh dang, the park is already starting to fill up with that one ride. We need to get more rides. New roller coasters, let's see what options we have. We got a lot of options. Cerberus Coaster. Oh, this is, okay, I really like this feature. Maybe it was a feature in three, I'm not sure, but you can choose a pre-made coaster very, very easily. It's very transparent what it is, or you can build a custom design if you wanna go all out and just do custom. Them. I'm just gonna start with the pre-made one and I can do mirror image and flip it essentially. Oh, we have that accursed entrance and exit being above the ground. Okay, we're gonna figure this out officially. So I'll put a roller coaster there. This button looks like it might be lifting it. Oh, okay. And I think think. So you had to click construct a bridge. Oof. Oh, I missed the mark. That is one downfall of 2D. Is sometimes the perspectives, if you're not used to it, unfortunately you just miss it. Oh, you can click from the entrance and then have it build that way. That's so much easier. We want to build the slope down. Get our entrance built. Build around the back. I'm just learning, okay? Look at this road. This pre-built coaster thing is really, really nice. This honestly makes life a lot easier. That looks just like a whirlwind of just waves and curves and things. We got a problem. I don't know how to get the road over there. Oh, see, it built all the way over there. That's not what I chose to do. Ain't half bad. Oh, this window system, it's, it's confusing me. So look, I keep looking down here and I'm like, why is pizza stall the only thing that's showing up? It's popping up these other things too in these other spots. That's gonna take some getting used to. Like I do like the window system, but I just wish that it would consistently pop up in the same spot. Like maybe have that one pop up there and then the fries have it pop up maybe like here instead of some random spot like up here because then I'm looking everywhere on the screen for it. So for the month of July, we're actually not doing half bad. We've been bleeding cash, but we've been building a ton of crazy stuff. But this month we might be on pace to make a profit. Now for the time being, I'm gonna have to increase this loan because now we're gonna make a custom roller coaster. You build your station, it looks like. Very similar layout, which is cool. I'm gonna need to toggle the chain. They have the different feet markers, meaning how high it is off the ground, because you're gonna need that in a 2D setting, especially so you can have an easier time lining up where you're trying to like match. And unfortunately for this game, due to its age, I don't think there's an auto-complete button, but I was kind of impressed that that was there in the third game, to be honest. And unfortunately, that's the highest we can go. See if we can recreate our uh, crazy ride into the pit of hell from the first video we did. Crank it around. And we're gonna take that nose dive all the way down into the ground. 
we not go underground? Okay, and I'm assuming that this special option here is what allows us to do some different things. So we have half corkscrew left, half corkscrew right, on right photo section. So maybe like they drop down and they get their photo taken right there, just and right about here is where I would really appreciate the autocomplete feature. I really enjoyed that in the last one. When you get into these pickles where you're like, ah, how do I finish this ride? And complete. Now we just need our entrance and our exit. Oh, it's climbing. Getting ready for the drop. Picking up the speed. Camera's flash. Oh, nice. Nice simple roller coaster, you know? So let's see what the metrics are. Intensity rating is ultra extreme. And we have 6.53, how? Off of this? You know, this highlights the same issue that I had with the last game that I played. It just feels very restrictive and I understand it's gotta be realistic. I, I'm not arguing that. But like, why are you letting me build it? Because no one's gonna write it. We, we learned that last time. I think a very useful feature and maybe it's in here, I don't know, is if as I was building it, by adding this piece, you will exceed the intensity rating to where people aren't gonna ride this ride. It'd be nice to have that because then I could go as I'm building it. Oh, don't add that part because now I just got to guess and try to figure out what's wrong with my ride. So if I hit construct, pick right here, how do I get over here? I have to click all the way over. Oh, geez, that's annoying. <laughs> delete, delete. How do I, I just, oh my gosh, this is actually annoying right now. How do I get over here? I'm pressing the arrow, that doesn't work. I push it this way, it doesn't work. There's probably some easy way to do it, right? There's gotta be. I'm just probably just being a dumbo. So let me go all the way back. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Now I can delete the part I wanted to leave. Now that the circuit's complete, we're gonna test this bad boy again. Round two. If that doesn't work, I don't know what's gonna work. I'm still at 6.4 vertical Gs. It's just off of that one loop. Like, it's just, it's very limiting. I just feel like I can't make a custom ride without it killing my guests. I just don't get why I can't just. We're gonna go up, reconnect this bad boy. Careful now, that turn might be a little too sharp. Do a super wide turn for the fragile little mix. Aye, aye, aye. How do I, oh my gosh, I just, I just wanna. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna click all the way back the other direction now. I swear if this was in the tutorial, just a simple way to be able to click to the other side, it might prompt me to do tutorials from now on because oh my gosh, this is very tedious. Okay, it connects. Okay, that fixed the Gs, but I'm still getting max lateral Gs of 3.74. That one little loop-de-loop -loop I had on there was too much, but then I've got this monstrosity and there's just a line out the freaking door. So from now on, I'm just going to use the pre-made coasters because I feel very discouraged. Dude, heaven forbid you click on the wrong icon because all of a sudden it's like pop-up city. You get to really relive 2005. I liked the system at first, but now it's just, it just gets so cluttered if you click on the wrong one. So one of the benefits I've seen on this game, watching some other content creators making content, is you can like launch your guests while they're on the ride. That's one way I would do a custom coaster. If I just went straight up and just went straight into the earth, just have people just... <laughs> Do I not have a chain? Am I not understanding something? I'm just, I'm so confused right now. I have the chain and it just goes up and then it goes back. Like what's the, you're supposed to grab the chain and go up. That's how the chain works, right? Okay, here we go again. Start at the back. Delete all of this nonsense because trying to fix something in the middle of your ride is just not worth it. Forward one, click this, click chain, click up, up, up. Flat with the chain, down without the chain. Curve, up with the chain, down without the chain. Nose dive into the earth, open the ride. Does it work? Why does it go backwards like that? I'm I'm done with that ride, delete. Okay, this time, can't open Valkyrie's Coaster 1 track is not a complete circuit. What? I need your help. If you've played this game before, help me to understand how come all of those YouTubers can do awesome, cool things, but I can't simply do this. Obviously I'm the issue. So I'm not meaning to bash on the game, but fundamentally that doesn't make any sense because, oh, you can make a ride that can kill somebody with vertical Gs, but you can't finish a ride that sends them straight into the earth. It's like, well, why, why are you letting me do it this way, but not that way? But clearly I need to calm down. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build a garden. My therapist told me that this was a great way to bring peace into my life. Ah, serenity. Since they can't handle the hardcore rides, let's just get a little Ferris wheel going. Dude, these, 
pre-made rides are killing it. I mean, we got lines for days, but then my crummy little coaster, no one wants to ride. It's so demoralizing. We are getting closer and closer to profitability. If I wasn't building so quickly, we would probably get there. But it's a nice aspect to this game that I didn't really feel all that present in the third game. Oh, we've got 3D signage going on. Right click to modify. Oh yeah, you know what this means, don't you? We got the Apple heart. There it is. Change the colors up. The Mariah Weakland. I apologize for the bad colors. The Ulrika Erickson and the Victor Henriksen. The Colin Holman. The Zach Cooper. The North Stars with the name kind of going into the next line. All these pop-ups everywhere. The Knight of Chris. The Ren Carpenter. And the Josie sign. That's actually pretty cool that you can customize that in a game as old as this. Now that I was doing that for a little bit, let's check and see how we're doing. Profitability at long last. But we did it. We got profitable towards the end. And the crazy thing is, is I've been playing for almost two hours already. And if we zoom out, my goodness, you can go crazy with this game, which is definitely a plus. So before I give my final thoughts, I know I butchered this experience. And at this point, I'm actually finding myself very intrigued and eager to try to figure out how to make rides as crazy as possible while also not killing those that ride it. The benefits here is I actually do prefer the graphics style of this game significantly more even though it's older. I also feel like the sound design is a lot better. And aside from all those pop-ups, the menu system and the user interface is much better. And so now I have to ask, does this game hold up today? And is it better than Roller Coaster Tycoon 3? I think Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is better. Now, before you leave a fat dislike on this video, I have something to say. Just hear me out. I think Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is better for what I enjoy these games to be. The fact that I can make my rides and ride them, as well as having most of the features that Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 had in a 3D setting, makes it better to me. However, it's also important to acknowledge I'm wrong and I'm in the minority of people. And that's okay. Some of it does come down to nostalgia, but also at the same time, there are nuances that I simply cannot explore in a simple revisit of the game that I've never played before. If I had gotten tens of hours or hundreds of hours in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, I bet you my opinion would have changed. But ultimately, I have to accept I'm probably wrong on this take, and that's okay. But I can't deny the undeniable success of this game and the fact there's still a vibrant, dedicated community. I have to say, it holds up today, regardless of my opinion on it. Let the debate commence in the comments section. But this leaves me wondering, considering Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 looks so similar to 2, what does it have to offer over 2? And is it worth revisiting today? 